Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. So today what I thought I would do is I would do a Bible flip through with you. I've had a lot of people ask me to do one in recent years. I have just put off doing them because really I didn't know what I was going to say or how this was going to impact you at all or if it would even be something that you would be interested in. But I've had a couple people reach out to me lately and they want me to do a flip through of this this entire Bible and so that is what we are going to do today. So first and foremost, I always have this exact same Bible linked down below. I got it from Amazon. I think that you can get it for a pretty reasonable price. Um, I went ahead and had mine engraved years ago at our local um, bookstore. Uh, so you can do that as well. This is my prized possession. You know, somebody asked me recently, what would it be that I would save in my home if it was on fire? And honestly, I know it's the thing that you're supposed to say, but honestly, it would be my Bible. It is years and years and years of walking with the Lord. This is my history with Jesus. And so it is just something for sure that I would want to save above everything else. So as you can see, it is chuck full of all kinds of goodness. And I'm not sure what it is that you would like to see or what you would be interested in. So I'm just going to hop in and show you kind of from cover to cover going through just certain chunks of uh, scripture, how I have laid things out. First and foremost, I want to tell you, do not be, um, never feel bad about writing in your Bible or putting things in your Bible of maybe misspelling words when you are printing in your Bible or maybe using a highlighter color that later on you're like, I have no idea why I use that. This is your history with Jesus. Make it as personal as you possibly can. So as you enter into the very first parts of my Bible, and again, I didn't alter anything for this video. This is just a real raw look of what it looks like. Um, I want to show you some of the things that I have right in the beginning. So here I have this little pocket that I put in here. I got it, um, I don't know, I think actually maybe I made this, to be honest with you. I uh, just put a little bit of tape on either side and then made this little pocket. But in here, I have scriptures to study. Now, this is a good thing to do when you have uh, you, you, you have no idea where you're going to start reading in scripture. And maybe you've heard a sermon, watched a sermon online, listened to a podcast, and you have had these different scriptures referenced to you. I always write them down on a sticky note, put them here in my Bible, and then that way I can have have always something to study. These in here are ones, again, that I've heard in, in um, sermons and things that I wanted to learn more about. And so I just put them in there. That way I always have an arsenal of verses that I want to study. And then over here, I just have like some quotes and different things that I have learned throughout the way, um, things that are important to me. Like for instance, here is Psalm 27, 8. I remember being so captivated by this when I first um, started studying scripture. Psalm 27, 8 says, my heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Isn't that cool? And so I love this so much. And so I put this here in my Bible. And again, feel free to like screenshot anything that you want here. Everything here is, I mean, it's personal and it's vulnerable for me to show this to you, but feel free to use anything that you see in here. I have in here, uh, search the scriptures, listen to his voice, discover his heartbeat. Um, I have here, God, let your work do, or, or let your word do its work in me because I don't want to have any attachments to me that aren't consistent with you. And so sometimes there's just prayers in here. Um, I have three things necessary to Christian seeking, desire, effort, and prayer. Um, so again, just personal things to me, notes that I want to remember, things that I, that I like to um, have reference to, quotes that I like, and all of those kinds of things. Um, in the very beginning here are just some old things that I've had in here forever and ever. For instance, here is the five P's of Bible study, and I actually got this from Pris Priscilla Shire, so it's not my own. Um, position yourself to hear from God, pour over the passages and paraphrase the major points, pull out the spiritual prim principles, pose the questions, and then plan obedience and pin down the date. I also have here um, a um, reference to the word meditate. 
And um, Billy Graham once said that if he had had it to do all over again in his life, he would have meditated more. And so I don't remember where I got this, but I, it's an acronym for the word meditate, memorize, eat the word, dwell on it, internalize it, think it over, apply it to yourself, uh, think it over, teach it, talk it to yourself, eat the word, explain it, and express. So uh, again, I don't know if I made this up. I didn't put a reference as to where I got it, but I just put it on a little index card and taped it in here. Uh, God's forgiveness of sin, kind of like the plan, and then um, uh, Romans 15, 17. So um, one of the notes that I have on here is, oh, I'm not who I was before. And this really is a reminder to me to know that every time I come to the word, I discover more about myself. Um, I learn more about myself. I learn more about Jesus. I change my ways. I live more for him. I'm more close to him than I ever was before. And so this is just a reminder to myself, I am not who I was before. Um, this here is a little color code. Now, I, this is something helpful that really helped me to study when I first started studying. When I got this Bible, it was in the year 2011, and um, my parents bought this for me for Christmas. And so I studied it. I started studying it first in the year 2012. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to use the color pink for everything that I'm going to study in the year 2012. And then in the year 2013, it was yellow. Then in the year 2014, it was orange, and so on and so forth. So much so that when I finally got to 2018, because I was running out of colors, I I had even gone to gray. I was running out of colors and then I did um, a highlight plus an underline. And so whatever it is that you have to do to kind of make those codes, this is very helpful. I feel like it's good to be able to go back and reference what year was I studying that? What year did I learn that? What year did I, um, you know, come across those scriptures and study them down as it relates to my walk with Jesus? Um, again, just certain things that I have in here that, you know, st stand out to me that I want to remember. Um, and so let's just go into um, some actual pages. So getting into the actual word. Now, a lot of times what I will do is I will use these little really cool. Um, so I get these at the Dollar Tree. Um, they are little pads of paper. They come in multiple different colors, yellow, orange, green, blue, purple. Um, I think in the holidays they come out with like, uh, like a mint green color, um, some gray. I've seen some gray before, um, some light pink, all different kinds of colors. And I use these to reference things that I want uh, to put in here as it relates to things that I have studied, things that I have learned, things that I feel like God is speaking to me about. And one of the things that I want to tell you right off the bat is do not be afraid to staple them right into your Bible. Now, I, I even have thin pages. These are not thick pages at all. They are thin pages, and I still go ahead and staple them into my Bible. Now, I will say a lot of times I will use a reinforcement like a sticky note or a second piece of paper, which is what I did here, to paper clip them in, or I mean to staple them in, because that way there's like a reinforcement with more material than just this thin little page. But, um, but yeah, I will do that often. And then what I like to do also is put little tabs. This is just washi tape. That's all this is, is a piece of washi tape that I've actually just... Um, I've, I've just kind of um, folded over and then taped right in there. So that way when, you know, I'm looking, it kind of sticks out of the top. Um, so these were just some observations of Abraham's prayer in Genesis 18. So feel free to screenshot this if you want. Um, but I will often do this. And then I will oftentimes put sticky notes in my Bible. Now, when I put sticky notes in my Bible, you will notice that most of the time they are on the bottom of my Bible, which means that they are in the notes section. I rarely ever cover text with a sticky note because what I found is that a lot of times when I have this on here for a long time and then I go to rip it up, it wants to take some of the text off. So I don't, I'm not a fan of doing that. But anytime that I see something in a commentary that sticks out to me or something that uh, some language that I, I like to um, that I found in a commentary or that I found when studying or a Greek word or a Hebrew word elaborated I will put it in sticky notes sometimes I will write it right in my Bible but a lot of times I will put it in colorful sticky notes that that way they are sticking out and that way 
I can place emphasis on them. Um, here is something that I often do. These are the four promises of God that match the four cups of suffering, according to Matthew 26. And so when I see things in the text that I want to correspond with another piece of text, I will always jot that down and then make a list of what those were that I found. Um, here were eight I wills. So a lot of times I will dig out specific words that are coming, uh, leaping off the page. Like I will free you from oppression and I will rescue you from slavery in Egypt. I will redeem you with a powerful arm. You see, I was noticing in here a habit of seeing the same word over and over and over again. I will, I will, I will. It's the promises of God. And so I wanted to emphasize those in there. Um, I love in a study Bible where you can get elaborated text or elaborated meanings of specific texts. I will often make notes uh, in that section as well. Um, again, just writing down anything and everything that I can see in the commentaries that stick out to me that I want to remember. Um, there are places along my Bible where it looks like actually I took a chunk completely out of uh, my the text of my Bible. And so don't be afraid of when things happen like that. You know what? I just do not place a lot of emphasis on error, whether or not I've spelled something wrong or like I said, if I didn't like the way that I printed it because I didn't like my handwriting. This is a working um canvas, so to speak. And so I love the thought of just working through all of this with the Lord. Um, again, anytime I want to connect different texts, I use arrows, uh, arrows. I circle and make different arrows throughout. Um, a lot of times I will highlight and then I will actually uh, put notes throughout my Bible. Like this one says, thank you, God. He will bless the work you do. Um, Deuteronomy 28, 12. And then I just actually wrote a note to God and I said, thank you, God. And then I dated it. This was on January 23rd of 2021. This is creating a history with God. This is creating a history. So you can look back and you can say, man, he really must have been working on my heart in that season for a specific purpose. A lot of times I will make notes to actually people that I know and love. I've been known to um, jot down my daughter's name. Uh, here is one, uh, just one example. Um, in 12, uh, December of 2021, I wrote a note right here to my daughter. Dear Chloe, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic. The Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Do not be afraid or discouraged. So I, I kind of said earlier that I oftentimes will not use a sticky note to cover text and you'll see that I did. So my, my method is not always perfect. Um, sometimes I do things like that. This one, um, I had read this text and I really wanted to put this note on the text so she knew what it was referencing specifically. And so uh, a lot of times I will just do that, make notes throughout here for different people in my life. So you know what? When I am gone, maybe someone will pick this up, they will study it, they will, they will learn something that they didn't know before, and they will, they will create their own history with Jesus, really. That's the heart of it at the end of the day. Again, just sticky notes. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll use a sticky note upside down and so that way the top of it is not where the sticky part is so that the top of it can actually stick out of my Bible a little bit like that and I love that um, this one is uh, I've referenced a different version so this version is the NLT I've actually referenced the King James version there's no impossibility when God says arise go over this Jordan and this is uh, Joshua 1 verse 2. And so again, I oftentimes will do that to reference different translations. A lot of times I will put uh, definitions for words, definitions for phrases. Um, I will write notes about the character that I'm studying. This one happened to be Joshua. This one uh, here, I remember when I did this, this was asking myself um, a couple important questions based on Joshua 6, 2. Who told you God was finished? Who told you victory was impossible? But God said, and this is, this is relating to Joshua 6, 2. So if you want to screenshot that and go back and study this for yourself, I absolutely uh, remember that when I was studying Joshua, I was so captivated with how rich it is. Um, so that is other things that I do. Um, again, just notes 
notes, character notes. When I, whenever, um, whenever I am highlighting a character note or I am highlighting in the actual notes, the study notes in the bottom of my Bible, I will always do them in green. That way they pop out to me and that way I can easily find them if I am looking for them. Um, again, just more, uh, this is just a note to myself, go with the strength you have based on some things that I was studying in Judges 6. I'm being trained for something else. Again, just a note to myself. Um, a lot of times, uh, again, I will use these little pieces of paper. I will staple them right into my Bible. And a lot of times I use my circle cutter to circle cut some um, pieces of stationery or just some, some pages in my stash of, um, uh, oh, um, what am I thinking of? Um, paper that I use for scrapbooking and I will often do that and then put that as the little piece that sticks up at the top of my Bible. Um, let's go into some other text again where I'm making notes. This one was, I loved all of Jehoshaphat, uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And so I wanted to remind myself of all of the major points throughout the story. So all I did is I took some of those uh, note sheets that I got at the Dollar Tree. I put a little tab at the top that said Jehoshaphat so I could stick that at the top of my Bible. And again, so that tab stuck out at the top. Um, sometimes I make notes here and do sticky notes that come out on the side. Isaiah 45, this was a huge, um, like a huge uh, scripture to me, a huge chapter for me when I was going through some difficulty several years ago. And so I marked that in my Bible. Um, again, many times where I will put on um, sticky notes and I will put them right into my Bible. This was a huge section for me, Isaiah 51 and 52. Um, the call is to activity. He who gives the call will give the grace. We are to be strong, valiant, and heroic. Arise. And this is based on uh, Isaiah 52 that says, wake up, O Zion, arise. Um, talked about putting clothes on. What does that mean to clothe yourself with God? Um, God's commands, I will often write those in there um, as well. Um, just, again, just a, a plethora of other notes that I use, highlights, um, I use little tabs, uh, sometimes I use actual tip-ins where I'm tipping in just extra text that I want to remember about um, a specific uh, place in scripture. This, this I have, Matthew 10, 27, uh, remembering God's call on my life. So make it personal. When you find things in the scriptures that you can make personal, make it personal to yourself. I use these guest checks. Now, I, I bought these guest checks on Amazon. They are just those old-fashioned diner uh, receipts, those guest checks that they used to use once upon a time. Remember, they used to be three, three, uh, um, they used to be three ply where they would have like a, a top copy and then they would have like a yellow copy and then a guest copy was like the pink one to tear off. I bought these on Amazon for very, uh, very inexpensively and I will often use these. So this is a note that I put in the beginning of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I said, when things in life get complicated and are difficult, return to the life of Jesus. How did he live? What did he say? What did he teach? And how did he practice? And so I just stapled this right into my Bible. Um, I wrote here, the New Testament is the law of love. And I wrote a little bit about what the New Testament is, what I've been learning about the New Testament. I find that I have more, um, more uh, references and more notes and things throughout the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John are just loaded with different notes and different... Uh, teachings, things that I have learned in the commentaries. Lord, increase our faith. This was just a personal note. Again, just me. A lot of times these are just prayers that I am praying to God. Um, you know, here is may I, may I steward my seed well, according to Luke uh, chapter 8. Um, all kinds of just information, things that I want to remember. 
uh, things that I want to um, have more clarified and defined. Here is a great prayer example uh, based on Matthew 6. So I'm always putting it in the text that I found it in. Uh, go ahead and screenshot if you want to screenshot that one. That one's great prayer example. God glorified, kingdom invitation, God's will be done, needs, forgiveness request, forgiveness offered, temptation removed, um, rescue from the evil one. This is the Lord's prayer. And so what I did is I wrote it down in my own language and then wrote a sticky note in there so that I wouldn't forget it. Um, this is uh, a study that I did on Matthew 5. It is defining what the Aramaic word is for the word blessed. And so I put in here what the word blessed was because in Matthew 5, remember, God says, God blesses those. God blesses those. God blesses those. And so I did a teaching about that in there as well. A lot of times you'll find that I've put, wow, like when, when God like shows me something or something stands out to me or it's like wildly important to me or it was just like literally a wow moment for me, I will write that down uh, in my sticky note because it is something, again, that God wowed me on. God surpassed my understanding on. I cannot tell you how many times that I have come to this word and just been absolutely overwhelmed by the things that the Lord has been speaking to me about. Here are some notes I put concerning Nathaniel. I remember being so enthralled with this man named Nathaniel that we find in John chapter 1. So much so that I have a podcast that I'm going to be um, doing in the near future that is all about um, this one line that Nathaniel speaks to Philip on. There's Philip and Nathaniel kind of have this, this dialogue, and I was so interested in learning more about that dialogue, so much so that it gave me the name for my podcast. Um, so again, now is the time to prepare. See, I'm putting notes to myself in here, uh, teaching on Luke 22, 28. I remember here um, uh, talking about Peter and what his life looked like and how, how much we can learn from him. Uh, going into the New Testament, I will always kind of do this at the end of a book. So at the end of 1 Timothy, I wanted to kind of... Um, go over like what what is it that I learned throughout this book well I learned that there were three words that Paul used over and over and over again in first and second Timothy and that was fight cling and keep fight the good fight cling to your faith and keep your conscience clear guard the good deposit God says and these are just again some things that stood out to me as it related to first and second Timothy now here is something else that I have done. A lot of times I will just use my computer and when I have learned so much concerning a text like I did in 1st and 2nd Timothy, I wanted to write down everything that I learned and its biblical reference so that I could put it in my Bible and keep it forever. So these are what I've called leadership lessons from 1st and 2nd Timothy. Now, if you are a part of my Facebook group, um, The Kitchen Table, I did make this available as a free printable for the people that are part of that Facebook group. So if you are not already a part of that group, I would strongly encourage that you do that so that you can see those for yourself. Again, all of the things that I learned concerning leadership through the books 1st and 2nd Timothy and then all of their scripture references where they can be found. Um, so I love that. Um, here was uh, a teaching that I was, I was learning uh, out of 1st Thessalonians 5. Um, he was encouraging those uh, within the faith to do these five or these four things. Warn those who are lazy. Encourage those who are timid. Be tender and weak. Be patient with everyone. So again, when there is practical application, when there is practical teaching, things that I can walk away with, things that I can learn as practical necessities to my faith, I will write them down. And so I won't forget them. Um, again, uh, just things that I will often just write um, in the text. Shine brightly. Be a good witness to others. Um, it's all grace. Uh, sometimes I have even ripped pages. Like this, this whole entire um, page of Ephesians 6 was completely torn out of my Bible. And so I just used some clear um, washi tape to, to washi it back in. Listen, 
no, no shame here. This is your working canvas. This is your life with Jesus. Um, this is something that I do again is I, whenever I come across scripture in a specific season of my life, I will date it. So this particular um, text, this is Ephesians 5, uh, what is it? Verse 14, it says, awake, O sleeper, and uh, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. This is from a retreat that I went to in Sept or in October of 2014. And so I always want to reference those down. Uh, again, you know, watch the tongue I put here. Romans 6.22, I want to reference another place where that same teaching is found. So again, don't be afraid to use pe your pen. Don't be afraid to use highlighters. Don't be afraid to make this as personal as you possibly can. Um, a lot of times what I will do when I come across a book that I really like, that I want to learn more about, let's go to Romans. I think I did this in Romans. Um, when I come to a book that I want to study more, I want to learn more about, is I will put notes in the beginning of the book. What is the highlight that I need to know about this particular book in scripture? Of course, it gives me all of the authorships and the settings and all of that. I did this also with the book of Jude. Now look at this. This is, um, this is fantastic. The book of Jude, these are all of my notes concerning what is the book of Jude, who wrote the book of Jude, when did they write it, what were they trying to communicate, right? Um, any connections that I had to other areas in scripture like Mark 6, 16, and then the good deposit, which is 2 Timothy 1, 14. Um, I also went through and I highlighted and I arrowed and I made circles and I boxed. So make it your own, make it a system that you like. I've gotten into the habit um, as of maybe the last few years of every time I run into the phrase, so that, or so, I will circle it or I will box it in. Why? Because I began to see that so that is a conditional phrase. It is linking, linking one thought to another. There is a conditional uh, text generally assigned to the first part of that text. So for instance, um, you know, be diligent in your seeking God so that you can live a righteous life, so that you can be holy, right? And so anytime that I see the, the phrase, so that I am making sure that I box it in and I draw attention to that because that is a conditional phrase. Um, so again, just personal notes here. But you, uh, Jude says in verses 20 and 23, but you, he's speaking on behalf of all of those within the church. And he's like, but you, this is what you must do. You must build each other up. You must pray in power. You must await his mercy. You must show mercy to those who are wavering in their faith and you must hate the sin. And so again, practical things that I can pull out from commentaries, pull out from the text, pull out from other uh, ways that I, have, I, I, I need to study or I'm learning. So again, just don't be afraid to make this personal, to make your own notes, to take the text, turn it into a personal love letter from God. Make sure that you are finding the practical places in scripture. And I promise you, if you do this, if you do this, you will never be sorry for the investment that you made. So friend, this is my Bible. I hope that this has given you some encouragement today to get into in your own Bible and study it for yourself. The heart of what I am trying to say today is not, it doesn't have anything to do with the version. It has nothing to do with what color sticky notes you use or what color highlights you use or what kind of print you use in your Bible. The actual end of the day message is get in the word of God for yourself. Get in this word. It is a working canvas and you have the authority in Jesus name to make it your own. Friend, I hope that this has been an encouragement to you today and if it has give it a like give it a thumbs up subscribe to this channel and do not forget to hit that notification bell to be notified for every time that I upload content just like this one I hope that this has inspired you to get into your word and to dig in deeply and to make the notes and make the notifications in your Bible make it your own personalize it as best you can and love on Jesus friend I cannot wait till my next video and I pray between now and then that you have an awesome day with Jesus. Bye friends.